today the hidden flaw in self-development and maybe it's not that hidden but um, it's certainly a flaw and and the, the the thing I'm going to really start by exploring today is this word self because what actually is that and why would we want to develop it so what is self what are we actually talking about here well my concept of me my identity who I think I am what I think my limitations are what I think is right and what I think is wrong uh, what I think is wrong with me my limiting beliefs um, all, all of that all of that is a self and I think a really pertinent quote to share with you here is by David Bohm who said thought creates reality and then says I didn't do that and that is exactly what the self is. The self is a collection of thoughts, a collection of beliefs, a collection of things that we think are true. And the problem is that in self-development, what we're actually doing is we're using that same entity, the mind, the very clever mind, of course, to solve itself. And it can't really do that. And in actual fact, where real peace is experienced is in the death of that. Not in the death of this mind-body system, not in the death of you physically, but in the death of the ego. So, for example, in a previous video, I talked about inner critic. So that's part of the self. Now, what we could do is trying to is is try to get rid of that voice try to you know change it do lots of affirmations do some journaling do some gratitude for ourselves do all sorts of things practical things but in actual fact a lot of the time all that does is bring temporary relief and a sense that we can't stop doing that because what we're actually trying to do is fill our mind with some alternative self so we're going to swap the self we don't like for a different self but all we're doing really is is spending more time in thought in mind in concepts in identity when really who you truly are is beyond all of that is something otherworldly to that and when we are spending so much time working on ourselves, working on the self, trying to develop the self, we're, we're moving further and further away from this essence of who we truly are, the, the peace, the love, the wisdom, universal intelligence, awareness, consciousness, whatever, God even, whatever makes sense for you to call that. When we're playing around in the psychology we're in the psychology playing with itself, <laughs> if you know what I mean, it, it, trying to fix itself. Thought, trying to repair thought or fix thought or change thought. And, and it's, it's massive is this, because it is the foundations of the whole self-development industry where we are continually trying to secure ourselves in this in a fruitless search really when in actual fact true peace true you know true clarity all of those things that we're seeking are not in there anyway we could do self-development till the day we die and we will still not experience that that which we are seeking we may have some kind of insight on our self-development journey, but that is not because of the self-development journey, really. But it all, to me, seems extremely temporary. Extremely temporary. That we, we, we might glimpse for a moment this this thing that we're seeking. But it isn't in reconstructing thoughts, changing thoughts trying to manipulate thoughts because because how i see this is that this essence that we are seeking is 
is there. It's there already. It's never been taken away. It cannot be taken away. It's like a diamond. I've talked about this before. It's like a diamond. It's solid. It's permanent. It's light, you know, like a diamond. It's filled with light, filled with energy. It is energy, really. And then as we're growing up, we're learning all this stuff about ourselves that isn't true, all this really, really unhelpful stuff, inner critical stuff, you know, ego, basically. We're, you know, we're learning we're learning the ego. We're learning to be the self. We're learning this identity. And that covers over that diamond like dirt. And the problem with self development is it's just more stuff. Now, it might be slightly cleaner stuff, but you know, Michael Neal talks about it being like, uh, you know, shiny polish, nail polish, and a bit of, you know, some little plastic diamantes over the top. But it, it isn't, so it looks light, it looks lighter temporarily. But how quickly does that crack and break away? But it's also just layer upon layer of more thinking. And really, this is a mind trying to fix itself. It, and that is just a loop with no end. Just we, can ju- we could just keep going with that literally for the rest of our lives. And, and reach a point of exhaustion like I pretty much did. The first time I went for my first coaching session around this understanding, I literally sobbed my way through it because the frustration from being in that loop, that never ending loop of trying to fix myself, thoughts trying to fix thoughts, self trying to fix self, ego trying to fix ego. When in actual fact, what we want is that to to die. That frustration just had me, you know, like just upset with myself a lot of the time. Because, of course, I was doing all the things I was told I was supposed to be doing. That I was told were going to make me feel better. And they didn't. They just didn't. Now, when we we begin to look at this more from this inside-out perspective, we can really start to see that, that real freedom doesn't come from trying to fix all the rubbish in the mind. You know, it's not all rubbish. This, you know, our mind is a powerful, powerful tool. But it's not a powerful tool at trying to fix itself. Really, the aim in this conversation is to see beyond it. To see who we really are beyond that. And in actual fact, it was when I finally let go of self-improvement and stopped all of those things. And, and spent more of my time just in this gentle awareness raising and perspective shifting conversation. That's when there was freedom. That's when there was peace. That's when there was liberation. You know, there's a lovely quote by Jack Pransky is, you know, all we are is peace, love and wisdom and the ability to create the illusion that we are not. I don't think there's much point playing in the illusion. You know, it's like, you know, it's like playing in, well, just playing in muck, really, and hoping that we're going to find something clean in the muck, when really it's the muck that's covering over what's clean and what's light and what's freedom, you know, where freedom is. And I realise that this is, going against because you know particularly if you're a high achieving person who who wants to do well in the world the idea of it not being down to you the idea of it not being your job to sort all of this out is it's hard it's really hard it was it was big a big thing for me to let go of all of that it took a while for me to finally say. Yeah, I remember my fiance and I used to do our gratitude journals together on an evening, and I remember when just one evening we were sat writing our gratitude journals, and I just said, "Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this?" And and we couldn't between us find a reason. We couldn't find a reason for doing it, so we just stopped. 
it, it, we saw through it. And that doesn't mean there's, there's anything wrong with doing gratitude journals at all. But as, as you begin to see that gratitude is part of this essence I'm talking about, you don't need to go writing it all down because it's in every moment. That's just one little example of this. You know, self-development says you must hone in and you must find those, you must create those bits of you to be grateful. You must change your mind to be more grateful. But gratitude has got nothing to do with the mind. Gratitude, when we are present, when we are truly present, when we are in the now, when we are in our light, gratitude is a natural consequence of that. So I hope this is helpful. And, and you know, in, in a way, I kind of hope this has rattled you a bit. <laughs> Sorry, but I do, you know, and I'd love to hear from you if it has. If you're going to go, hang on a minute, she's saying don't do self-development. It can be quite a challenge, can that? But um, hopefully it's a, a, a nice challenge. So thank you so much um, for watching this. And um, I hope that you find it helpful and I'd love to hear from you. Um, you know where I am, you know, you know the Thriving Woman approach is available to you to um, explore. If you want to find out more about that, my, my details are below there. So take care, lots of love. Thank you.